see the lmtd if you have to select the uh, this one it's very difficult in fact okay the to select the heat exchanger through lmtd procedure it is difficult okay selection of heat exchanger using lmtd if there is a heat exchanger which is there we can do it but designing how to do it is difficult in fact you have to go with a lot of trial and error procedure okay so that is why ntu is used okay but before that we will see okay selection of heat exchanger huh? no there are many problems i am skipping that tomorrow we will do it together okay because ntu and lmtd together we will do problems so that you should be able to select which one is important okay so both together we will do okay so that you will get a bigger range and uh, you can answer okay so selection of selection of uh selection of heat exchanger heat exchanger through lmtd selection or design you can say selection or design heat exchanger through lmtd method lmtd method. how to do it first one okay first method is select the heat exchanger heat exchanger suitable for the application there are something which is not suitable suitable for the application for example if you have to use a power plant okay in that shell and tube heat exchangers are generally used if you see uh to say uh distilleries or uh, our uh, pasteurization or dairy industry they we use parallel flow heat exchanger compact heat exchanger. then if you go with the uh, say our radiator which is cross flow heat exchanger so select which is important Okay, that's how. Okay. Second one. Second one is determine determine the any unknown unknown inlet or outlet temperature. because everything is not known you know see when you go with uh, see if you want to cool the uh, you say cool the hot fluid then you know what is the inlet and what is the outlet what should be the outlet based on that you have to calculate how much cold fluid has to go you understand you need to know what is the inlet and what should be the maximum outlet of the cold fluid these two things has to be understood so these are all unknown things you understand that so uh, determine any unknown inlet or outlet temperature and heat transfer rate and heat transfer rates rates using an energy balance using energy balance using energy balance. third one Next, calculate 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 lmtd and correction factor if necessary correction factor in the sense you have to sometimes use the correction factor to lmtd sometimes you have that thing like it's not the same log mean temperature difference okay there might be some correction okay and the correction factor if necessary if necessary for obtain overall overall obtain in the sense obtain is select or calculate select or calculate depends select or calculate 
the value of overall heat transfer coefficient. Overall heat transfer. U. Overall heat transfer coefficient. U. Next, calculate the heat transfer area. Calculate surface. Okay. And see whether it affects. Okay. So this is how the LMTD design is. And see how big the heat, ex heat exchanger should be. What should be the size? How much long the pipe should be? When you say area, it means you are selecting what how big the pipe should be, is it not? How how thick the pipe should be, how clear, how long the pipe should be, that gives you the heat transfer area, is it not? That you select. And then after knowing the heat transfer area, next you have to uh, measure what next you have to measure, you have to uh, select how much pipes and all those, what are the available ones based on that you have to select. Okay. This is how the Procedure is this procedure. Okay. See now in this the problem is okay. See, the problem which is faced here basically is see now if you have to see what is here Q dot is equal to U A S delta T mean. Correct. Now if you see here, okay. See, heat transfer rate we have to determine first of all. Okay. So, after determining the heat transfer rate, outlet and inlet temperature has to be see. You can either fix the outlet and inlet temperature of one of the fluid and then determine U. Determine U. Okay. So, if I uh, say, for example, I have the this is the hot. This is the hot fluid in, this is the hot fluid out. Okay. Now, this TH in and TH out is specific. Now, how long it should be depends upon what is the T cold in and what is the T cold out. We have to decide. So, what we have to decide? We have to decide TC in and TC out. We have to decide that. Next, we have to decide. See, TC in has M dot in it. So, depending on M dot, if M dot changes, my TH in and TH out changes. TC in and TC out changes. So, the variables are huge. Okay. So, what are the uh, what are the uh, different things? What is there? U is dependent on what? U is dependent on? U depends on? See, this U depends on M dot, right? Then mainly M dot. U depends on M dot. And what else? That's it. U depends only on M dot. Correct? Anything else? U depends only on M dot. And uh, heat transfer coefficient is only based on M dot. Correct? Okay? Then, uh, if you see... Uh, yeah so heat transfer rate u depends on m dot correct okay so now here
So depending on the heat to be transferred, the two things which has to be designed. One is area of surface has to be surface area has to be defined. Okay. When surface area has to be defined, delta T mean changes. Delta T mean changes when the surface area is changed. Okay. So what are the two things we have to design? One is TC in and TC out. And TC in and TC out. And depending on that, delta Tm changes. So when area is changed, when area is changed, delta Tm changes. So then you have to correct the area so that Q dot remains the same. So there are multiple factors here. Always I'll tell you. So Q dot depends on what M dot, AS and TC in, TC out, right, may depend on TH in and th out obviously it depends if we if we fix these two if we fix these two then what are the variables the variables are this 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 so much variables we have to change getting the point so for a particular q dot you have to change m dot you have to change as you have to say tc in and when you change m dot and as tc in changes tc out changes and when m dot changes, u changes. So there are multiple things which comes in the and it's an iterative process. It's not a direct process, it's an iterative process. You understand? That is the main problem of LM. Designing is difficult. Designing what should be the area, what should be the m dot, how to uh, say q dot based on that. These are all the difficult things in LMP. To compensate that, we are going with NT. Okay, I'll write it down. Wait, okay. See here. Okay. See, determination, determination of heat transfer rates, heat transfer rates, determination of rates and rate, heat transfer rate and outlet temperature, outlet temperatures of hot and cold, hot and cold fluids, hot and cold, cold fluids. For a prescribed mass flow rate, prescribed mass flow rates and inlet temperatures, and inlet temperatures when the type and size type and size of the heat exchanger heat exchanger heat exchanger okay so when this prescribed mass flow rate inlet temperatures when see uh, determination of heat transfer rate and outlet temperature for hot and cold fluid for uh, prescribed mass flow rates and inlet temperatures when the type and size of the uh, heat exchanger are specified specified is not easy is not easy why okay See, why it is not easy is because, see, 
see uh, what happens you know see if you have the inlet temperatures given say tc in and th in is given okay th in is given now here what happens m dot has to change when m dot you change variably your uh, u changes when u changes see when m dot changes u changes when u changes q changes delta tm changes getting the point when m dot changes q changes as well as u changes so when u changes q dot changes if you keep q dot same delta tlm changes this delta tm changes so it's an iterative procedure i'll repeat again see if uh, i'll write if uh, we decide decide on m dot m m dot okay oh sorry one, uh, once 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 as is specified as is surface area specified surface area is specified a surface area is specified we need to decide on m dot based on m dot wait and i'll write this words m dot based on m dot based on the based on the based on the assume assume u assume u and assume u and calculate delta tm the change in the change in m dot changes changes the changes the overall heat transfer coefficient heat transfer coefficient that changes that changes the heat transfer rate got the point so we have specified the area see when you say size type and size of the heat exchanger are specified then the size is fixed now what happens based on that size we say a particular heat transfer rate has to be there but if the heat transfer rate is specified and now based on that heat transfer rate you try to make the uh, what is say you try to Uh, put a particular m dot based on q you have to change the velocity when you change the velocity boundary layer thickness everything changes you understand so when m dot changes the uh, when m dot changes the heat transfer rate changes is it not so the overall heat transfer coefficient has a change makes sense now to account for this overall heat heat transfer coefficient what do you do uh you have to increase the size or decrease the size so when you do that again this iterative procedure again and again iterative procedure has to be done that is the main problem of lmt makes sense so let us see okay write this down this one you have as you have you written write this down.
done. Now I'll tell you in the proper way how the things come. Okay, next. Okay. Now what happens? Observe here. There are C Q. Okay. Also, suppose in case. Okay. In case. <coughs> In case uh, m dot c hot, okay, m dot c, okay, m dot m dot hot. In case m dot hot, m dot hot, m dot c dot h, c dot c, okay, not c dot c c. T h one, t h one, t c one. U naught and A naught are known. Are known. And and T C two and T H two have to be estimated. Have to be estimated. Okay. Have to be estimated. Okay. How do we do that? Estimated. We have to satisfy, satisfy, satisfy. Q dot should be equal to m dot h c h t h one minus t h two should be equal to m dot c c c into T C one or T C two minus T C one should be equal to U naught A naught into delta T log mean. So now, if you change one thing, so if you specify T C one, we have to see what is T C two. T H one, you have to see what is T C two, correct? So two are unknown. Two equations are unknown. See, this is T C two, T H two has is unknown. Okay. So if you consider L M T D, L M T D comes as delta T L M is uh, T H minus uh, delta T one minus delta T two into log of Delta T1 divided by delta T2, correct? Delta T1 by delta T2. Here, finding out TC2 and TH2 becomes very very difficult. You have to do by trial and error. Okay? To calculate, to calculate TC2 and TH2, we need to employ. Trial and error method. Trial and error method. Because one equation two unknown fraction. Same equation, there are two unknowns. If you see that, see this one with this. If you see, okay, getting that is very difficult. Okay. So now, how? 
see let us assume here if i assume th2 okay so using this equation we can find q tc2 and delta tlm okay for example okay now let us see okay one by one let us see. okay how that trial and error has to be applied let us see because this is very important to understand students so, okay it is general understanding which is important right this okay fine trial and error method has to be used okay how let us first assume let us first assume assume th2 th2 okay using what was the last equation here 16 is it not let us write this as 17 let us use the 17 okay so 17 here together oh yeah let let it be 17 let this be 17 now here now using let us assume th2 okay using using uh, let us first assume using q is equal to hey th2 equal to 17 and hake den mamili aita sorry agidya 16 tarak bandiru okay agidya ಕ್ರಾಸ್ಲೋ ಸೇವ್ ಆಗಿಲ್ವಾ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ಲೋ ಸೇವ್ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಒಂದು ನಿಮಿಷ ಮಕ್ಕಳೆ ಆಗಿದೆ ಸೇವಾಗಿಲ್ಲಾಕ್ವೇಶನ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು now using m dot q is equal to m dot into q is equal to m dot h ch2 into th1 minus th2 we can determine we can determine q we can determine q okay now uh we can determine 2 q okay then using m dot h ch2 into th1 minus th2 is equal to m dot c c c c c okay th ch c c th into tc1 minus tc2 we can determine determine tc2 fine we can determine tc2 correct now then we estimate then we estimate q is equal q dash is equal to u not a not delta t log mean now if q dash is equal to q if q dash into q then the estimation then the estimation of th2 is correct th2 is correct if q dash if q dash is different from q 
is different from Q. The Q dash is different from Q. A fresh value of pH2 has to be taken. Fresh value of pH2 has to be taken. Correct or not? Okay. So this makes it iterative. This has to be repeated. Until pH until Q is equal to QH. So that is when mass flow rate is specified. Now, if we change the pH also, because pH is specified, then we have to use the iterative method to get the solution. What would be pH1 is specified, pH2 is specified. Now the area is also specified. We have selected the heat exchanger. After we select the heat exchanger, we have to calculate what is pH2. Now if there has to be still changes, then still there is a problem. Like pH2, what is pH2 is not enough for us. For the purpose which is used, this pH2 what we are calculating is not proper. Then what should I, should I do? I should increase the size. This is specifying that I've already specified the heat exchanger in the market I did that either in the iterative method or th to find out then we see whether for my purpose it's enough if it is cooling the heat the hot fluid is our purpose there might be another thing heating the cold fluid may be the purpose if heating the cold fluid is the purpose, then TC2 is specific. And through iterative procedure, you find out TC or TH2. TC2 is specified if the cold fluid has to be heated. You know the specification till what temperature it has to be heated. Makes sense. This makes an iterative procedure to select the heat exchanger. Now, here again, there is still a problem. It is not told there. One of the main problems is when you take another heat exchanger, mass flow rate also has to change. And with mass flow rate, there is a change in U0. This becomes really, really difficult to find the answer. So the solution is NTU. Okay. The solution for this design problem is NTU. Right? Easy. Return this down. Return. Chart. No, please. Now, when you consider NTU, okay, so to avoid this, to avoid the iterative design, design problems in LMTD, 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 an alternative an alternative direct method alternative direct method called called direct method called effectiveness NTU method effectiveness NTU method effectiveness into method was designed by by Keys and London Keys and London or two scientists named London in 
1955. So it's pretty early. So what we are studying now is in heat transfer, which is pretty recent. Heat transfer fluid mechanics. We have updated a lot. Okay. So let us see. So let us see effectiveness in tube metal. Effectiveness in tube. So the term effectiveness. The term. Effectiveness of epsilon of a heat exchanger of a heat exchanger is defined as is defined as epsilon is equal to epsilon is equal to actual rate of heat transfer. rate of heat transfer divided by maximum possible maximum possible rate of heat transfer My actual rate of heat transfer divided by maximum possible uh, possible rate of heat transfer. Okay, so epsilon is actually equal to Q by Q max, which is actually equal to M dot H C H into T H one minus T H two divided by M dot C smallest smallest m dot c smallest into th1 minus tc1 because that is the maximum possible rate of heat transfer maximum possible rate of heat transfer is when the heat transfer is between the maximum temperature difference and when the uh, what do you say when the m dot c is the lowest? Correct, no? When m dot c is the smallest of the two heat capacitors. So there is m dot hch and m dot m dot uh, c cc. Now maximum heat transfer happens to the one which has a smaller heat capacity, it takes more heat transfer. Which has a smaller heat, heat transfer, it either loses or takes. Makes sense. So maximum heat transfer happens when that happens. M dot C is the highest. Sorry, is the lowest. M dot C is the lowest. Has the maximum possible heat difference, is it not? I'll cl cl clarify this more tomorrow. Okay. This can be written as this is also equal to M dot C cc into tc1 minus or tc2 minus tc1 divided by it can be one of the two okay m dot c smallest smallest into th1 minus tc1 right this time. where 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 TH1 minus TC1 is the maximum temperature difference. Obviously, the temperature has to reduce. The maximum temperature difference is between TC1 and TH1. If it is a counter flow, then TC1 is over here, TH1 is here, maximum is that. Or test and cold distance. That would be the maximum amount of heat transfer that can happen. Make sense? In a maximum volume is 
Uh, smallest m dot c is the smallest. m dot becomes more, what will happen? The heat transfer rate will reduce. m dot c shows what is the heat being carried. It's not just c. When c is small, yeah, because if you say with the time, what is happening with c being less, what's going to happen? This temperature is going to rise fast. Yes, no? So what's happening? Temperature is going to rise fast. So what happens? Your m dot should be higher. m dot should be higher to compensate for that. Okay. Talking about heat capacity. Hmm. Heat capacity. No, 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 no. He has a point. He has a point. He has a point. I have to answer him. I have to answer him. He has a point. He is saying that, see, if m dot c or c is small, then the temperature rises fast. So how did you take that that is a q max? Why did you take the maximum possible heat transfer happens between m dot c being there? Why did you take small? You should have taken largest. Correct. That is your problem, is it not? You are getting the point. So we will see this tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll answer this. Okay. I think sir has not come. So right this time. Correct. The heat capacity is large. The temperature difference reduces. Heat capacity is large. So this is the answer. What is happening? I need to have maximum possible heat transfer in the system. Maximum possible heat transfer happens. Uh, I, I'll come back. Write this. Have you written this down? Finish writing. Okay. Everybody finish writing. No. First, no clarity. Very good question, very good question. Yes. Okay. Now, here, okay. See, I am answering this question. The maximum possible, the maximum possible, the maximum possible heat transfer, the maximum possible heat transfer depends on, depends on one of the fluid. depends on one of the fluids one of the fluids undergoing one of the fluids undergoing maximum possible maximum possible maximum possible change in temperature maximum possible change in temperature right and that and that will be the fluid that will be the fluid that will be the fluid which will have which will have if you have the minimum the minimum value minimum value of heat capacity rate minimum value of heat capacity rate the one which has 
Understood that? So, the maximum possible, you may say, sir, m dot h, m dot c, high, will give a higher value, but no. The maximum possible is the cool fluid, the cold fluid, or the hot fluid, has to have the maximum change. So, which has the maximum change? Maximum change is the one which has the lowest m dot c. So, it has to go from one to other, is it not? So, if you have the maximum possible change, when will, ha when will, it, have, when will it have a maximum possible change? Then it is big enough. We have selected a cold fluid. We have selected a hot fluid. Maximum possible change is when it is infinitely big. So, actually we are comparing an infinitely big heat exchanger and our heat exchanger. So, maximum possible heat transfer is when the heat exchanger is infinitely big. Okay. And when it is infinitely big, for example, if I have a, uh, say, for example, if I have a parallel flow heat exchanger, parallel flow heat exchanger, this is pH1 and this will come pH2, I see. Now, maximum possible change will happen to what? Say this is, say, pH2. Let us say this is, uh, if I say, uh, if I consider, uh, say, M dot first case. Yes. We are having a counter flow heat exchange, okay? So, we'll say M dot H, CH is less than m dot c cc if i have that okay which is minimum m dot hch so what will happen to this the cold fluid which is going here tc1 will reach this th2 and why hot fluid sorry uh, the maximum change i'm sorry here TH1 and TH2. So cold fluid, the uh, in, in the sense, the hot fluid will reach the TC2. Fine. So sorry, this is TC1. TC1. This is TC2. Okay. It is like this. It's counter. If it is counter flow, TC1 or TH2 as, as it comes down, it reaches C1. It reaches what? TH1 minus TC1. This is the maximum possible. And what is the uh, heat transfer? You cannot go more than that. You cannot go more than that. If in case of counter flow or parallel flow, if you see, this is counter flow. In case of parallel flow, you have TH1. Huh? Tc, which is higher, m dot c. So, what will happen? This is going, P, this will not have full difference. What is coming in Tc2 is coming and Tc1 is coming, which has lower heat transfer coefficient, m dot ch. What? So, it will reach C1. So, maximum possible heat transfer rate is there only, is it not? Now, if, say, for example, this is for counter flow, for parallel flow, it will never reach. That difference will never reach. So, maximum heat transfer rate can happen only for counter flow. In case, M dot H C H is greater than M dot C C C, then what will happen? You will have this cold fluid which is going in Okay, so uh, if you consider TC1 is going here, so this is TC1, this you say is TH1, okay, TH2, TH2, so this will go here like this, TH2, say this is TH2, TC1 will reach TH2, TC2 will reach TH1. Uh, it's infinite, it reaches. 
at infinity. It reaches at infinity. It is infinitely big heat exchange. So we are comparing the given heat exchanger to infinitely big counter flow heat exchanger. That is what is meant by NTO method. That is what is meant by effectiveness. Getting the point? So what are we doing? We are comparing the given heat transfer, the given heat exchanger to infinitely big counter flow heat exchanger. How it will help, we will see. I think sir will come now. So we will stop here. Uh, you will have five minutes break. <laughs>